Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm uh, Mark, and today we're taking a look at Adventures of Conan, which is brought to you by Guild Force 9. It's for two to four players, ages 14 and up, and games generally run about 90 to 120 minutes. Let your blade be sharp and your heart unyielding, for in the fray, only the bold claim victory. The Adventures of Conan is an asymmetrical dice game of exploration, sorcery, and glorious combat set in the Hyborian Age. You will use a pool of custom dice to control the actions of Conan, his allies, and his foes as they travel the lands in search of adventure and power. With these custom dice, you will pray to the gods for power, explore the world seeking combat and training, and carry out adventures and encounters to unlock beautiful rewards. Each roll brings new challenges and routes to victory. Conan and his allies must work together, but prioritize their own personal goals in their search for victory. All while the foes plot their downfall, setting traps for the adventurers on their travels. All of the characters, adventurers, and art are drawn from the Dark Horse Comics line of Conan titles. Now, let me tell you of the days of high adventure. Are you ready to seize your destiny and leave your mark on this epic saga? So, this is a thematic dice checker, and if you've watched any of my videos for any length of time, you'll know I love theme and dice checking. Right up my alley for both of those things directly in this game. Now, these dice are going to be used in various ways. So, in each phase of a round, you'll use them differently, which is really cool. You'll be creating dice pools, doing various things, going on adventures, encounters, and going through the plot, the story. And so, there's various ways for the game to come to an end as well. Obviously, your after victory points really is your main goal based on the player count will determine how many victory points to bring the game to an end. But there's a couple other ways. Now, there's also multiple types of characters. Obviously, Conan is always in the game, but in a two-player game, it's Conan and a foe, and in a three-player, it's Conan, a foe, and an ally, and then finally, a four-player game will have two foes and Conan and an ally. So the thing here is that even though there's allies in this game, you are really out for yourself. You're trying to get the most victory points by the end of the game in order to win. So there's various actions and things you're doing around the board to help you along that way. Multiple tracks you're gonna be looking at, and really, the dice play heavily into the theme and everything you're doing throughout the round. And there's several different types of faces for these dice, and they're all related to different things you're gonna be doing, but they do give you a handy guide telling you what they all are, what the symbols mean. And both they become very intuitive once you start playing. You don't have to reference it that often, I would say. And then each of the characters will have a primary dice and a generic dice. Now, Conan has all his own dice that he will be tapping into. And then through the course of the game, you'll be able to spend coin or gold in order to buy dice, but they are temporary. So you can increase your pool of dice for a particular round, but you'll have to put them back at the end. So going after gold is, is another good thing because you will want to increase your pool of dice. Now, also, the other characters, you have the foes who use black and red dice as their primary, but you can never have two foes that use black. So it forces you to kind of mix and match the different foes in various ways. And your allies in the game will use green dice. So they'll all be tapping into very different types of dice and they give you handy guides also about the foes, Conan and the allies to help guide you through and it helps you kind of lead your way into what would be your best path for victory in a lot of cases. So there's some great info there you want to tap into, especially when you start learning the game and so forth. Now. You know, it is a dice chucker, but you're not stuck with dice rolls because you do have fate tokens that help you alter your faces. So you do get a chance to alter dice rolls. It really does help to have fate tokens in order to do that. Now there's several characters in the game. Obviously Conan is who I gravitated towards to play, but they have different special abilities at the bottom of their card. And you may be flipping the cards through the course of the game as well, especially like with Conan if you use his ability. But they all have different abilities and they show you what their different dice are and so forth. So very informative and I love that they definitely tied into all the lore and all the things that are happening within the Conan universe. Looking at the main board, you'll see that there are several different types of kingdoms. They're all color-coded, which means they relate to the different dice, because these dice can be rolled at these kingdoms to get special bonuses and help you through the game. And you'll see, too, that you have your tokens for Conan, the foes. The allies will be using the Conan token to move around the board. Yes, taking your token as Conan and moving around. You both potentially will get benefits from that, obviously, but they might put you in danger at times as well. But that's not a bad thing because Conan is all about going after those enemies and taking them down. So there are really three different ways for this game to come to an end, all based on three different tracks. 
First, we have the victory point track across the top. Again, based on player count, we'll determine where you need to be in order for the game to come to an end. And then we have the achievement track. And there's three tracks here, getting bonuses all as you travel along. And if you make it to King Conan, you get all kinds of victory points. So that's huge to keep going on that track. And then we have the plot track, really kind of leading you through the story. And if you reach the end, that's another way for the game to come in. So all those things tie into a lot of what you're doing throughout the game. So it becomes a race. You really feel this pressure to start working on different various things. I really like that in this type of game. And beyond the three tracks and the plot cards, there's three other decks. First, we have events. Events, you'll draw a card and you'll put out various tokens. Could be challenge tokens, it could be fate tokens. And when you move into those areas, you can pick them up and resolve them. The fate tokens, again, are the ones you get for changing your face of your dice. So they are critical to have those in hand. There are a finite number. You only have four of each. So once you grab one and use it, then you'll come back to the pool. But once all of them are gone, you have to wait till they come back in order to get the various types of tokens. But the challenge tokens can lead to end of game victory points. It could just be that simple or could lead to a battle where you have to engage back and forth. We really like that aspect where it's like random encounters almost beyond the encounter cards, which we'll look at. They're just random in the wild monsters you run into. So challenge tokens are pretty fun. And then we've got encounter decks and we've got adventure decks. Now encounter decks only trigger when the encounter track is full of dice. And you as Conan definitely need to be careful here because you don't want foes to fill up this area so you have less dice to work with, whatever. But, you know, keep an eye on this. You want to be contributing to it and then perhaps triggering those based on where you are, the different icons and so forth. Same holds true for adventures. These adventure cards, everyone gets to participate in. Everyone around the table will be rolling dice trying to match the symbols. And that's true with pretty much everything you're doing in this game. For the encounter deck, for the adventure deck, for the plot, you're just rolling dice trying to match symbols and so forth. So. If you are doing an adventure card and you don't roll that last dice as Conan, then potentially foes are going to give victory points more than what you would have. Or perhaps you're going to be sharing some of that with an ally and so forth. So adventure cards are really fun. Again, encounters and adventures and challenges, all part of what makes this very thematic you as Conan. So there's really four main phases to a round, and within those phases are multiple steps. It might seem like a lot at first, but it's going to be very intuitive as you play, absolutely. First, we start with the resource phase, where you draw that event card. That's the very first thing you do. You might populate with fate tokens, challenge tokens in different areas, different kingdoms, and you'll also have a bonus, a plot bonus. So we're going to be going and rolling our dice first against these plot challenges. Now, the thing here is that you're going to be also first pulling your dice together. You have your four that you start with, but you can spend gold to buy even more dice, but just temporarily, just for that round. And you do have a god token as well that you can grab and use for that round or a future round. You have a limited number you can hold, but these will have special bonuses, abilities on the back, like re-rolling your dice. So if you use that ability, you spend it, it goes back to the pool. Then we're going to roll our dice for the first time and try to move along this plot track, trying to match the symbols in the middle of the card. Now, if you do, you're going to move down the track and so forth, but there's some bonuses to be had here as well. If you roll character symbols, you'll get bonuses. If you roll the symbol at the bottom, you'll get a bonus. Also, at the bottom of the event card, if you roll against and get that symbol, you'll get that bonus as well. All kinds of different things based on the plot cards and what you're doing. And these are the standard ones you start with, but there's a ton of different plot cards. And as you learn the game, you can shuffle them up and put random ones out all you want to. Then we move to the main phase where you get to take actions based on your dice rolls. So many possibilities and results that could happen here, but things like moving around the board, or you might get the pirate symbol allowing you to move from port to port, or you might get the flag allowing you to take advantage of the effects of that kingdom. And you can even spend a gold to roll one of the dice into that kingdom and get the benefit of that dice, the bonuses and so forth. And you have the ability to scry, which means you can peek at a challenge token. Might be very valuable before you move into an area. Other things you might do based on the symbols and what character you're playing are like sorcery, where you can draw a challenge token and put one on the board, perhaps to hamper Conan along his way. Or you might exchange or cycle out one of the encounter cards. Or you could trade. If you trade, you can swap out a fate token or you can cycle one of the adventure cards. So there's so many different things available to you with these different actions. Now, you have swords as well. You'll need to start to create a dice pool if you happen to go into battle, like with a challenge token, which might lead to you creating a warrior pool of dice. 
So you'll be separating those from the other dice, getting ready to perhaps duel one of your opponents or go after one of these challenge tokens. Now the challenge tokens might have three swords that you need to battle up against. So you'll take your new pool that you've created and roll it, trying to match the number of swords or beat it in order to win that challenge and get the benefit of the challenge token. Other things you might do in the main phase, if you have the character symbol on your dice for Conan, it's the ax again. If he rolls a number of those, you could potentially use them to move along the plot track. So you will spend those dice based on the chapter card you're on so forth to move down the track even closer to the end. Or you might use one of your dice to put on the encounter track to eventually unlock it and use the dice for that triggered event. So as you can see, there's tons of different things you can do. Again, all based on dice rolls, and I'm just scratching the surface here, trying to give you a sense of what you can do, but there's just know there's many, many options available to you, and especially based on which type of character you're playing. Then we move to the triggered phase. Now, we kind of talked about them already, the encounter cards and the adventure cards. This is where those come into play. So wherever Conan ended his turn on the main phase will trigger potentially those things. And if that encounter track has a full set of dice, he will engage with those cards. And sometimes for the encounters, it could be multiple cards. But again, you're trying to achieve the symbols and you'll get the bonuses of those cards and so forth. Now for the adventure cards, they're more detailed, right? Everyone around the table again is gonna be rolling and playing against them. And you hope to be as Conan, you're gonna be using their dice but you want your dice to be the last dice used in order to take the card and get the victory points and so forth. So there's lots of different twists and turns around all those cards and how you might engage with them. And then finally, we move to the end phase part of the round. And there's actually a lot going on here. And it's very dependent where your character ended up, be it for the ally, for Conan, or the foes, and that kingdom. So that kingdom has attributes. And if you have fate tokens that match those attributes, you can start to move up the achievement track, which is really cool. And also, if you have adventure cards that you've acquired and you're in that area, you get the bonuses from these cards. Really, really cool as well. And finally, if you have dice that you purchased for this round, they have to go back to the main supply. And really those are the basics around what you're doing, giving you a feel for the game. Obviously there's a lot going on and a lot of directions based on the characters you're playing and the dice that rolled and what your results were. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, obviously this is Dice Chucker right in my alley, but there's a lot of ways to augment your dice with the fate tokens and how you're using them from each of the different phases within the round. I really like the aspect that those dice pool work so differently based on where you are and what you're doing within that round. Really well done. Also, the characters and how they play, you know, the foes versus the ally and Conan, obviously they're in it for themselves in order to get the most victory points, but you know, there's some crossing over between the characters for sure, but I really like this aspect. Conan is really kind of after different things than the ally and foes, but really in the end, it's just about those victory points. I like how they play so very differently and what you're doing to engage with the game. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.